Welcome to Europe ECR 2025. My name is uh, Davide Capodanno, an interventional cardiologist from uh, Catania, Italy. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Michael Joner from uh, Germany and Lisbeth Rossell from uh, Belgium. Welcome. And thank, thank you, you for being here to address uh, two important questions that uh, regard the topic of uh, TAVI. Of course, now we are in the era where uh, many questions arise that are very practical. One is about the timing of the procedure and another one is uh, uh, on how to address the coronary artery disease in patients who also have uh, uh, CAD combined. So maybe I will start uh, with you, Michael, and ask you, there was uh, one trial recently, Early Tower. Can you remind us uh, what was uh, uh, this trial about and the key results? Yeah, thank you, Davide. I think this was a very important, very pragmatic trial that tried to understand the timing, as you say, of a procedure, of a TAVI procedure in patients that we used not to touch asymptomatic patients with high-grade aortic stenosis. And it was a randomized control study and randomized patients into an early intervenance versus a delayed intervenance. And what the study basically found, approximately 1,600 patients, it was a combined primary endpoint that especially rehospitalization was significantly reduced when you perform early TAVI. And the interesting point about that study is that the, um, the transfer to early TAVA, meaning the uh, procedure itself only took approximately 14 days, uh, and that explains the very profound effect that we had seen in the study. So maybe one of the questions that this trial brings to us is, uh, are we able to uh, guarantee a TAVI in 40 days after the diagnosis? How does it work in your center, Lisbeth? Yeah, it's indeed important because we know there is increased mortality when the waiting list uh, increases as well. So I think one of the things that we learned from the tri trial in the sub-studies also is that the patients who advance to an acute uh, symptomatic AS, we need to treat them early. So we need to have our systems ready to to follow the patients very well and the moment that they start showing symptoms those are the ones that we really need to take in front of the row. Absolutely. So this uh, watchful waiting strategy has to be supported by good logistics yes. and uh, any center must be ready to react to any change in uh, symptoms or gradient because symptoms are no longer needed. And now the second question, which is about coronary artery disease. Now, uh, there is a, a trial also addressing this question, which is a notion tree. Can you remind us of what is uh, this trial about? Also, this trial is very important because we actually don't really know, we don't have much information in this topic. And so in an ocean tree, they actually randomized the patient who has coronary disease, which is defined as either a lesion of 90% or more, or FFR positive, uh, above 0.8. Those were randomized against medical treatment or against PCI before the TAVI. Most of the patients had their ta uh, PCI done in this group before the TAVI. A smaller amount had it during the TAVI or after the TAVI. And the maze rate uh, was significantly higher in the patients that did not have their PCI done uh, before the, or around their TAVI. And this was mainly driven by MI and um, unplanned revascularization. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, those patients who had a PCI done, they did have higher bleeding. So that's also an important finding, I think, for this trial. Can you tell us also which patients were in the trial and which patients were somehow excluded? Yeah, that's important to know because, for example, there were no patients with left main disease and also the syntax score was rather lowish in these patients. So maybe the patients with a high syntax score, they are rather referred to cabbage. So that's really important. It's not the, the, the very severely diseased uh, coronary artery disease that is in this trial, it's a syntax score 9. Okay, and yeah. Michael, how do you react to the CAD? Do you do the PCI before, during, after? Good point. I think this question still remains open and there are ongoing randomized or one uh, ongoing randomized trial addressing this topic. But we haven't completely changed practice as yet. And I think it is important to understand that this was a very important study for the first time showing the benefit of revascularization. Um, but as Lisbeth pointed out, we need to be more granular on the details, understanding which patients really benefit from this treatment. And, and just I can say so much for now, we remain with doing most PCI after we have performed the TAVI procedure. Definitely. And now with the new valves, new strategies for the coronary uh, reaccess, I think it's even uh, easier now to decide. So yeah. you are not compelled to do everything before the mm. TAVI is implanted. That's an advantage yeah. for sure. Yeah. So we address two important questions. One is the one about timing. And uh, we learned that sooner is better than later, probably. But of course, there are logistical challenges. And we also learned that uh, addressing coronary artery disease is becoming a must in uh, these patients, particularly for uh, prognostic lesions. And uh, therefore, of course, 
course, uh, this is something that may impact practice from, uh, from tomorrow, let's say, from when the uh, studies were published. So I would like to thank everyone to, for watching this video and thank you all for uh, your participation. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.